Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to get the game Skyrim working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this is using Crossover 22 and this has the vegetation texture flickering fix. So this is going to be a big improvement over Crossover 21 and it also contains the dialogue fix as well. So I'm going to show you how to install this, how to get Crossover working and how to get the Windows version of Skyrim working on macOS. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first step is going to be to click the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you do make a purchase through this link, then you'll be helping to support the channel and the work that I do. So once you get to the Crossover website, what you can do is scroll down and then we can go ahead and click the Buy Now button and you'll be taken to the Purchase page. So what we're interested in is Crossover Plus, which is the main Crossover product. So this entitles you to the Crossover 22 license, which is the current one at the time of recording. If Crossover releases an additional in the future, for example, crossover 23 next year, then you're going to be able to get that as well. And currently the price for this is $74. However, if you type in the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki and then the arrow button, you're going to be able to get a 25% discount. Also, once you've made a purchase, you can go into your account and then go to my account here. If you click on support licenses and then renew now, and then you find your current license and click renew now, you'll be able to get $40 off your renewal price too. So if you follow the link in the description and you make a purchase or a renewal, then I'll earn a small commission and you'll be helping to support the channel and the content that I create. You can also do this renewal multiple times and renew many years into the future at a discounted Right. However, what you can also do is go back to the main page and then click the try now button. And this is going to give you a 14 day free trial. If you do decide to make a purchase, then please make sure to follow the affiliate link at the top of the description. Here, we're going to press try now. So here we're going to enter our name and email address and then click the download trial now button. So once the file is downloaded, we can go to our finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. So now that we have crossover downloaded, we're going to go ahead and double click on the zip file. And once that has extracted, what we're going to do is to hold on the file itself and then drag and drop it into our applications folder and then let go. So within applications, we're going to scroll down and find our crossover application and double click. So once we have crossover installed, what we need to do is to install the Skyrim cross tie. So in this install section here, I'm going to type in Skyrim. And what we're going to do is to install the Skyrim special edition. So this is the version I have on my Steam account. What I'm going to do is to press the install button. So if you have a Steam bottle here already, you can install this into the Steam bottle, or you can create a new bottle here by pressing select bottle and then make a new bottle specifically for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim special edition. I actually recommend that you do a separate bottle from your Steam bottle because that's going to prevent conflicts. So this is going to install the Skyrim Special Edition via Steam, but it's also going to create its own bottle too. So I'm going to press install now. And if you do install Steam separately, you can install Steam into its own bottle as well. So here we're going to press yes. And basically this is going to go through the whole process of installing Steam, but it's also going to include the cross tie, which is basically all the fixes required to get Skyrim working. One of the main ones is going to be the audio fixes for dialogue and sound effects. So every time something comes up, just press next and finish. And then here we've got the Steam installer. So we're going to go ahead and allow this to install on its default location, run Steam. And then this is going to download Steam and then download. And then we're going to download the game. So one thing you should be aware of, if you click off Steam, you can just pull it up again here. And also we're going to be making use of DXVK. So, so in previous versions of Crossover, the DXVK implementation didn't really work very well. We had shining, flickering textures and some artifacting. However, in Crossover version 22, this is all working correctly. So feel free to turn on DXVK. Another handy tip is that if you want to turn on the frame rate counter with a bit more detail, what you can do is to control click on the bottle, go to open C drive. Then we're going to go view and then show path. And then within the path, we're going to go down one level to the parent folder. We're going to control click on cxbottle.info and then open with text edit. And at the bottom of this, we're going to add a new line, which is dxvk underscore HUD with these two straight quotes equals straight quotes full. And then we're going to go to file and save, and that's going to give us a bit more frame rate information. So now that we're in Steam, we're going to press log into existing account. I want to type in our username and password. And then this is going to trigger a Steam Guard. Press Next, press Finish. And now you can see that Steam for Windows has popped up. So you can tell this is the Windows version because of the way that the window management looks, because of the way that the Windows Maximize button looks. And basically everything that we install in the Steam application is going to be the Windows version. So we're going to type in Skyrim and we're going to install Skyrim Special Edition, press Install, and then basically put it in its default location. 
So before we launch the game, it's quite important that we should turn on DXVK. Running Skyrim through Crossover 21.2 with DXVK turned on resulted in some graphical artifacts, but thankfully this has all been fixed in Crossover version 22, so we're free to use DXVK, which is going to run a lot faster than Wine D3D. So once the game has finished downloading, we're ready to press play. So I'm going to press the play button here, and that's going to go ahead and launch the game. We're going to agree to the terms and conditions, and it's going to be ready to launch. So here it's going to install some dependencies. Just let that complete. So if you do want to launch Skyrim, Steam is going to ask for access to your documents folder. This is going to allow it to synchronize save games. So just allow that. Here we're going to press play. So when you run Skyrim for the first time, it's going to detect your hardware and it's going to put it in low quality. However, the M1 and the M1 Max especially can actually run this at high quality fairly well. So you can actually turn up some of these settings if you so please. So I'm going to run this at 1080p on high settings and press OK. And then we're going to open up and play the game. So this main menu is loading up. You can see the DXVK HUD in the top left hand corner of the screen. I'm going to continue my cloud save. So anyway, you can see that the M1 Max is capable of playing this at nearly 60 frames per second at high settings at 1080p, and it seems to work fine. So kind of the main issue that we had before, which is the flickering vegetation texture, is not present in this particular version of Crossover 22. So thankfully, that's all been fixed in this most recent version, and we can play this with the performance benefits of the XVK. And another thing that the cross tie fixes is the lack of dialogue and some sound effects. However, I can talk to Lydia. However, if I just turn up the volume here, Still need me to do something? I can talk to Lydia and she can give all of the dialogue without being completely silent as it might have done if you didn't use the cross tie. So as you can see, the game runs pretty well on the M1 Max chip at 1080p on high settings. And apparently this game is also moddable as well. So I've had members of my Discord server say that Skyrim on Crossover 22 supports many of the mods that you might enjoy and love. If you'd like to find out more about games that are compatible for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please make sure to check out the M1 Compatible Games Master List. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This contains a really long list of games which are compatible through the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, whether it's running natively through ARM, through Rosetta 2, or one of the compatibility layers such as Crossover or Parallels. So please check it out. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Please also make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki YouTube channel. This contains a playlist of game benchmarks that I performed on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, and there are literally hundreds of games which I've tested. So please check this out. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. So anyway, that is how you get Skyrim working on the M1 Max chip. It also works on the base vanilla M1 as well. You might have to turn down some of the settings, but it's gonna work pretty well. And the crossover version is gonna run much better, especially now that all of the graphical and audio fixes are now integrated into Crossover 22. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other game tutorial videos like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out, and I'll see you in the next video.